The task for Mr. Levi Strauss was clear. Make tough and durable pants for prospectors. Mr. Levi got to work and soon had his first jeans patented. In no time, farmers, lumberjacks wanted them too. And then cowboys, hippies, rockers, clerks, students, and children too. We started collecting jeans because owning one pair wasn't cool. And throwing them away because an old pair of jeans wasn't cool. And thus pants, made to protect, started destroying nature. And chock a block with Cayman. Yes! I want to find out as much as I can about this extraordinary place. I try to get closer to them. Hey! But some of my encounters have been too close for comfort. Oh dear, that hurts. Don't do that, please. Mr. Nigel Maren, welcome to Slovakia. It's a great opportunity for us to see you and have a, a time and a, an opportunity to talk to you. Our Ecotop Film Festival fans definitely know your job, your results, your, your uh, titles, documentaries, films. So I think you are really famous also in uh, Slovakia. But let's see your story. Tell us your story. We really love the stories because the Ecotop Film Festival is a long story as well. So. I would like to focus on your story. Where was the real beginning of your story? Yeah, I, I started as a lover of animals and the natural world rather than as a filmmaker. So I went to Bristol University uh, to do botany and zoology as a degree. That is the home of the natural history unit, which is the Hollywood of wildlife filmmaking in, in Bristol. They make all the David Attenborough films. And they asked me if I could help do the research on a series about the Mediterranean, a David Attenborough series. Um, I did that and then they asked if I could help filming um, a thing where they miniaturised an actor and he went into a garden to meet insects that were giants and my job was to make sure the worms moved in the right direction. So I was the earthworm wrangler. So that was my first job in television and then I learnt the craft of filmmaking because they offered me a full-time job on First Eden, which was the David Attenborough series about the Mediterranean. And I learned there the craft of filmmaking, how to do close-ups, how to do wide shots, how to shoot things so things cut together. It was a bit disappointing because I thought I'd be traveling all around the Mediterranean with David Attenborough, but I spent most of my time in the macro studio with a top cameraman filming insects and lizards and making lovely sequences of, of how they behave um, under studio conditions. But because of that, I had a brilliant training and I learned how to make films. If I'd been in the field with a cameraman filming birds from a hide, the film is then made back in the editing suite, mm -hmm. not in the field. But I had to learn how to make a newt walk in the right direction how a salamander should look at the camera and all of those sorts of things. So that's how I learnt the craft of filmmaking. Total different game. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, exactly. So it was not your, your uh, childhood dream or uh, the mind's uh, set and, and so on? My, my childhood dream was to work with animals. Um, I wasn't very good at mathematics and statistics, so I couldn't be a biologist. It wasn't observational work anymore, like when Conrad Lorentz and Nico Timbergen were doing their work. They were famous animal behaviour scientists. So I had to, I, I'd quite like to have worked in a museum, taxonomy of insects in the British Museum, maybe. But then the best thing was to work television, because then you can show the world the work of scientists, not all scientists the great communicators, mm, but yeah. we can make films and show their amazing discoveries um, to the world. So that was good for me. And it was great that I had my scientific training because now I can speak to conservationists 
and scientists, and they know I'm not just a journalist, they know I know a little bit about biology. <laughs> you so understand the things. I understand, yeah, yeah and, that, and you can have a discussion with them about evolution or cladistics or whatever else you want to discuss, and they know that you know a little bit about what you're talking about. And do you remember the day you decided to change the things, I mean, in your career, to change it? No, I think it was, I do remember the day because there was a professor at my university who was helping the BBC make a film about cliffs and I said, I will pay myself, but can I join you on a scouting trip? They were going okay. to look at cliffs and see flowers. It uh, was on university studies. When I was yeah. at university okay. and, uh, and I paid for myself to go for the day. And I thought, this is a great job. You know, mm -hmm. they were looking for flowers and seeing lovely places for scenery. And I thought, this is, of course, the business has changed now. You, there aren't the budgets to go on scouting trips. Mm -hmm. You have to go straight and do the filming. But that's why I wanted to do it. I thought it, was, I thought it would be a wonderful career. Fantastic. And what did you study? I studied botany and zoology. Okay, so close to the topics. Yes. So we have the university studies, uh, uh, you have um, experience from the, the television, and then you started your own career, yeah? Yeah, I, I worked at the BBC for a long time. I made a series about the nature of Iran, another series, um, I made the program, one of the programs called SuperSense, where we flew along with birds for the first time, so we hand-reared birds. So. You could drive in a car, the bird flew along, and you could get amazing tracking shots with, okay. with you know, it was all, it were techniques that developed by a man called John Downer, who's a great filmmaker, where you track along with animals and you've got special lenses to go along the ground with a snake and things like that. So I learnt my trade there. Then I worked on a series called Realms of the Russian Bear, which. Mm -hmm with Nikolai Drozdov, who was a Russian naturalist, and I went to the Soviet Far East. It was the Soviet Union then, and yeah. I went to, um, uh, on the border with Afghanistan in, in Turkmenia, which is now Turkmenistan. Um, so I did that, and then um, I did films of my own. I did, obviously, I did a film about snakes. This was as a producer, not mm -hmm. as a presenter. Um, and then ITV, who was the opposite channel to BBC, they needed a British Steve Irwin. For some reason, they couldn't get Steve Irwin, the Crocodile Hunters <laughs> films. So they asked, would I do it? And I said, not, well, I don't really want to be in front of the camera. I'm a producer, not a presenter. But they, uh, they persuaded me and then I started making films of my own. And then, because I did a series called Giants, where I compared myself to the biggest animals around today, the biggest bears, the biggest snakes, the biggest sharks, the people that made Walking with Dinosaurs said, why don't we send this guy back in time to yeah. meet dinosaurs and they can, he will give scale to our creations. And that's how Prehistoric Park and all those, which everyone knows in Slovakia, the dinosaur films started. That's interesting that I heard that you have never been in hospital, maybe once, yeah? So in all that uh, adventure experience and a risk, uh, the, the taking a risk and so on, you just one time spend in hospital. Isn't yeah, right? I've, never, I've never broken a bone. I've never had a nosebleed. I've never had a black eye. I've never had a tropical disease, malaria or anything like that. So it's you know, kind I, of miracle I, yeah, in yeah, that kind I, of uh, expeditions. And, and, uh, yeah, I've been, I've been very lucky. Um, uh, and I've been in hospital since to have an operation on my knee and things like that, but not. I haven't been in because of Fantastic. illness. Yeah, and uh, so can you remember and can you tell us your, your really worst story or experience? Yeah, well, I mean, it was a terrible experience. It wasn't with me, but I was with a shark expert called Eric Ritter. He's now sadly passed away. He mm -hmm. was a shark psychologist mm -hmm. and um, we were filming bull sharks in the Bahamas and mm -hmm. his friend was flowing, throwing in bits of fish and um, to feed them yeah to feed them and the sharks were going between our legs big two meter sharks and one of the sharks went up to his leg and bit 26 um 26 inches about 45 centimeters out of his leg so it was a very serious accident that was show that was included in a, a very famous discovery show called mm -hmm. anatomy of a shark bite because my cameraman was filming under the water as the shark went in to bite him in slow motion. So 
There you was, were next to him? I was next to him. I was just a meter away, so it could have easily been me. So there was 50 square meters of blood in the water. The camera assistant ran in to help. I helped him out as well. The sharks all skedaddled because it's a myth that they go mad if there's blood in the water. They don't know what human blood yeah. is. They like, yeah. they like fish, not, yeah, of not, course. Yeah. not human blood. So they all skedaddled. He had three months in intensive care and they had to rebuild his leg with muscles from his buttocks. Mm -hmm. um, so all was okay, but that was a very frightening moment. But people always say, what's the most dangerous thing? The most dangerous thing is driving to the locations. If yeah, you're okay. in China, if you're in Iran and you're on a mountain road, or in Slovakia or in the centre of England, the most dangerous thing is driving the car. The animals aren't dangerous. Statistically, you are right. Yeah, definitely. the animals aren't dangerous because we know how, I know how the animals behave and I know how far a cobra can strike and I know all of those things. But travelling to the location is, is the most dangerous very, thing. There's lots of wildlife filmmakers, or not lots, but wildlife filmmakers I know have died from falling out of helicopters or being in plane crashes mm -hmm. or car crashes, but yeah. not very rare for the animals to kill them. And if you can move the time uh, back, maybe, did you make any differences in your, in your career, in your job, in some, some piece of your work or everything? Would you do it again in the same way? Uh, I've, I've got no regrets. I think I would do it again in the same way. Um, I'm, you know, I get lots of people, children writing and saying, we want to be you when we grow up and we love wildlife because of watching your films. Um, or we want to be paleontologists because we saw prehistoric part. That for me is the best part of the job. If you can encourage young people to be interested in nature, it's very important. Even more important today with the big problems, massive problems, a thousand times worse than the COVID-19 mm -hmm. pandemic is climate change. That is a massive problem to, to us and we need to sort it out. It's not too late. I'm very optimistic, but we may need to do something very quickly. The other thing is the loss of biodiversity. Here in Slovakia, you've still got lots of butterflies and insects and there's birds and sparrows. In England, We've got the lowest biodiversity anywhere in Europe, and that's mm -hmm. because the farming practices are more intense. There's pesticides, there's monoculture. Here in Slovakia, at least for now, you've got smaller fields and with, you know, flower filled meadows and things. You really do need to keep that and not make the same mistakes that we've made in, uh, in, in Britain. We, we can't, people from England or Great Britain, can't tell Slovakia how to protect their nature because we've destroyed ours. But it's just lovely coming to your country and seeing your wonderful mountains and meadows and what you're doing for nature conservation. And we didn't do it and we, mm -hmm. we're, we've got the consequences now. But hopefully for you, you're still going to have bears and wolves and lynx. Wildlife. So your great grandchildren can see that wildlife. Um, whereas in, in Britain now, Hopefully they're going to do a lot of work now to make things come back. But mm -hmm. if they don't, it's going to be a terrible thing for my grandchildren. Yeah, okay. And if you are talking about uh, children, you have two children, yeah? Yes. Am I right? And how was it when they, they came here, when they, they uh, have born? Uh, how did you change it? How did you change you? Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't changed much, um, but obviously being a father, it's important because you want to share your love of nature with the children and, and, and you can't force them to like birds. You know, my, mm -hmm. my little girl likes dancing on TikTok now. <laughs> she's not interested in butterflies or <laughs> dragonflies. And, How and, old is uh, she? Actually? She's 12 okay. um, and, and my boy is interested in business studies. You can't mm -hmm. make them be interested in nature, but maybe in a few years time they'll come back to uh, to loving it. Yeah. But, uh, I understand it because I have for almost 14 years old daughter so yes I completely understand it. Yeah well after yeah. 14 they change a lot yeah. But yeah. I, I believe they influenced you as well yeah? Uh, opposite way your children. Yeah well you, you uh, I mean I think we should all try to see nature through the eyes of a child and stay childlike you know, my enthusiasm catching snakes or seeing butterflies 
is because I still have the passion that I had when I was a child, and it's. I can see very, a little boy in you. Yeah, still, it's very yeah, hard to keep definitely. that. But you, you want to be a little boy yeah. if you can. Yeah. And are there any dreams um, in your life? I mean, uh, career, personal, or in life? Yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to. Um, obviously, it's great being here at Zazriva with this rescue centre. I like helping mm -hmm. organisations like this. You know. Ideally, there should not be any rescue centres, but because of what we're doing, even in Slovakia, there's houses being built in the mountains and there's roads in the mountains, so, and there's power cables, so birds are hitting power cables and bears are being run over and orphaned and all of those things. So, Zazriva Rescue Centre is doing a great job, so it's nice for me to be here to um, endorse their work. Um, personally, before I die, I would like to see a snow leopard. So I'd ah, okay. like to um, go filming with a snow leopard, which you would are in be, be great. Yeah? In, in, well, in India, there's India. a in Ladakh. I think my next series will be about the wildlife of India. So mm -hmm. hopefully, I can go and uh, uh, you know see snow leopards there and film snow leopards. I, d I don't do the filming myself. Obviously, I'm I hardly know how to use a camera, but um, you know, obviously. I go with, with people that know hmm. what they're doing. I can tell stories, um, but I can't use a camera. Okay. And is there any motto or your strong idea you use, uh, you find out uh, in, your, in your life in the last years? No, I think, um, I mean, just keep your passion for the natural world. And if, if you're an older person and you like the natural world, try to share that with the younger people, because they're, they're our future people. Young people need to learn about wildlife in schools. Um, you know, young Slovaks need to know that you've got bears and wolves here. They need to know what special insects you have here. So the more, you know, the young people are our, our future and we need to, they're right. Greta Thunberg and some of the others are right. The politicians need to listen to them and start doing something. So we right believe now. that to educate, to teach uh, uh, young people and students and children in that way, environmental uh, education is the right way how to change the society. Uh, yeah, I think and so. The future. We, we need to start in schools. Not, I mean, television programs are good because they get young people interested in wildlife. They watch me running with dinosaurs, and then they see me with snakes, and they mm -hmm. think we'd like to go and see snakes in the wild. But you can't just rely on television programs. It needs to come, you know, parents need to take their children out into the woods to see birds. They need to take their children to see snakes in the wild. It, it, it can't, if they just watch television and play computer games, then they're not getting out in nature. So we need one of the rarest animals in the woods at the moment is a child. Um, and it's important mm, yeah. that we change that. Yeah, fantastic. Good idea. Uh, I have met us uh, really, uh, I was lucky, uh, or I am lucky that I have met a lot of uh, people like you, interesting people with uh, fantastic, uh, fantastic stories. One of them is a, a fantastic filmmaker. And I asked him that, uh, come on, you are uh, really nervous because you are at home now and you would like to go outside and uh, visit some country and uh, have some adventure. No. I'm so happy I'm at home. I would like to stay, you know? So how is it in your case? Uh, the same or you, when you are at home, you are looking forward to go outside and to visit some new country to make some new project? Yeah, no, I, I um, you know, I used to travel 300 days a year. So that's, oh. that's very difficult. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've had two divorces. It's, two hard, divorces. it's hard to stay married if you've, you're traveling. God that, gave you the second much. chance. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, uh, but, you know, I like being at home. I've got lots of animals at yeah. home. You know, I've got owls that I keep as, okay. that, that were orphaned in captivity, captive mm -hmm. bred owls. And I've got reptiles that I'm hoping to breed, you know, t pond turtles and lizards and snakes. So I like being at home, but I also like, you know, traveling. It's been fantastic traveling around Slovakia, seeing new butterflies that I'd never seen before, seeing chamois in the high Tatras, marmots mm -hmm. in the high Tatras. I love seeing birds. I've seen nearly half of the species of birds in the world. So I like seeing those. It's great fun. Tomorrow 
I'm going out around Zazriva to see eagles, which will okay. be very exciting to see eagles in the wild. So there's all exciting things to go, but I, I like being at home and I like traveling. So both of those things I enjoy. So is there any special in Slovakia for you? That kind of things? Uh, yes, yeah, Slovakia, I mean, a country in Europe to have bears, lynx and wolves is mm -hmm. extraordinary. And you've got, we have about um, 70 species of butterfly mm -hmm. in the UK. You have 700 species of butterfly. You've got, in Central Europe, there's 10 times more species of butterfly than in, in Britain. The diversity is much greater. I love seeing Saker falcons around a nuclear power station. Mm -hmm. They've had their best breeding year ever in Slovakia because the people have put, conservationists have put nest boxes on electricity pylons mm -hmm. and they love nesting in the pylons and they can scan around. So that's a wonderful story. Saker falcons in Slovakia having their best breeding season ever. And they're a rare bird in Europe. So there's some great conservation stories here fantastic for us <laughs> yeah very yeah. good and what are the next plans I, I think i'm doing a series on india and if, if i'm lucky because i'm so popular in central europe maybe i'll do a series about the wildlife of um, central europe mm -hmm. so but we, and in slovakia maybe there will be some project film project oh yeah, no, one okay. of the one of the programs would be an hour special about slovakia and, fantastic. and eco tourism in slovakia you know how how people can come here and enjoy seeing wildlife hmm. themselves. So we're looking forward. Now, when when will be uh, when it will be possible? Well, if it, obviously film, as you know, filming is difficult because you need to get funding and you need yeah. all the other things. But if the funding's in place, then we'd start next spring filming. And is there any anything you are really proud in your in your past life or in your career, uh. in your personal life? Yeah, no, one I'm, thing you can you I'm can choose. proud of um, I'm proud of all my films you know I'm proud that you know they're inspiring young people to mm -hmm. like nature I'm I'm proud of uh, prehistoric parks that's quite difficult to do there aren't dinosaurs really so I have to pretend there's a t-rex chasing me so that's quite a difficult thing to do um, so no I'm, I'm I'm pleased with everything I've got no regrets about my life perfect uh, you are a lucky man, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. What do you know about Ekota Film Festival? Did you hear about it uh, or not? Yeah, no, I've heard about it um, and uh, uh, what a fantastic festival it is and you've had some very special guests there like Jane Goodall. She's, yeah. she's what, in modern terms, you'd say she's one of the biggest influencers yeah. in, uh, in wildlife conservation ever. I've never met her, but obviously she's a great lady. Um, I've seen the film done here about Zazriva, which was, was a very good film. So, uh, no, I've heard a little bit about the festival, yeah, but thanks. not much, but it, sound, it sounds great. Nigel, thank you for your um, time and for your, the speech. It was a really pleasure for me and um, to see you and to have a experience and the daily program uh, with you in uh, Zazriva Rescue Station. And I believe that we will have another opportunity to meet each other and uh, to invite you as a guest on the Ecotop Film Festival maybe next years. And definitely all the best uh, in your career. Uh, we are very grateful for your, for your job, for your documentaries and, and all the best in your next career and in life. It was a pleasure for me. Thank you, Peter. Thank it was you. really good fun speaking to you and it would be a great honor to come to the film festival when there's an opportunity. It's a so. great, uh, great honor for us. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Mm.